Honestly, I think only you and me would be stupid enough to leave Southern Ireland at 1am in the morning to catch a 7am ferry. To not go home for a nice early sleep. But to wander straight into a golf competition. I mean, I'm not ruling out cancelling, to be honest. <laughs> Since we've got a little bit of situation here. A little bit of situation. I mean, the mini has been amazing this week. Yeah. It has carried all of our clubs, surf gear, clothing, but it has let me down on one major, major issue. Mm. It snapped another one of my golf clubs. I mean, my blooming driver. Yeah. The space in here is just, it's a bit of a joke, really. I mean, my driver. So today we've decided, for some stupid reason, morning peeps, by the way, that it would be a great idea on our on our Leaving Ireland tour to go and head straight into a competition in Scotland, mm -hmm. meaning we've got to get up at one o'clock in the morning for a really early ferry to go and play a golf competition. I'm absolutely shattered. I've got a broken club. I'm not going to I'm not going to lie and say I'm not raging because I am. <laughs> but I guess we really have to kind of hit the road, and we might miss this ferry and miss this golf comp. So guys, buckle up. You're in for probably the bumpiest ride we've had so far. <laughs> Well, we have made it to the 7am ferry. We're just sitting in the queue, ready to get docked for the two and a half hour journey. I'm not getting docked, we're ready to board. Same difference. To sail. Ready to sail <laughs> all the way back to Scotland. Yeah. And then we got this two hour journey for our golf course. But I'll be honest, I've actually got no idea where we're playing today. <laughs> Karen Rath, I think, Karen Rath. Karen Rath? Yeah. In Lanark? In Lanark. Well, I know we're going to Lanark. I know we're going that far. I mean, I need to find a way to possibly replace that driver. I mean, I can't actually afford it, but I'm thinking maybe we could find a bargain basement American Golf along the way. So I'm crossing Yeah, there's my got fingers. loads of tailor-made sims for fiber and stuff there. I mean, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping I'll just wander in there like, oh my God, you're already golf. We can do this massive 95% <laughs> discount. <laughs> <laughs> or not. <laughs> Look, who are you? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> yes, full price. <laughs> do they not know who I am? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a golfing, YouTubing megastar. I mean, you guys know it, clearly. <laughs> clearly, I just walk in there, 95% discount. They're throwing, like, they're throwing a lifetime supply of balls as well. <laughs> oh, probably, yeah. Yeah, that's going to happen, yeah. Um, yeah, you need to start our driver, though, because we have one at home, but we're not going to be home in time and back, so. Yeah, it's not good. It is not good. Need to start a driver because, yeah, we just, it ain't good. It is not good. Well, it turns out, albeit a fun one, Ireland was one incredibly expensive golf and travel trip. And I've learned some pretty valuable lessons. Mm -hmm. Do not take a Mini Cooper full of a whole load of stuff on a golf and road trip. Get your club jammed somewhere amongst the stuff and snap it in the boot. Because it turns out replacing the shaft isn't as easy as I thought it was. No. We've just been into American golf and I thought, you know, I'd just take in like half the club and be like, help me. Turns out they can't help me. They had no, like, exhale stuff. They had no second-hand clubs. And with today's golf competition ahead, and a starting hole of a 235-yard par three, something had to give. And what gave was me reluctantly handing over my credit card and buying two new for the drivers. We've got the sim tailor-made by myself and the Kalia for Fifi Golf. I mean, have you got any extra shifts going in the tea room? Because I think we're going to have to stop making videos <laughs> and just start washing more pots to pay for these things. I mean, 
Yeah, I can hook you up. Yeah, I can give you a few more hours. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to need it. It's either that or you guys are going to have to start subscribing more and hopefully getting the YouTube revenue up because <laughs> this actually really stings. It really hurts, I'll be honest. And if it wasn't for that daunting pathway at the start, I'd have just been like, now nah, I hit a five iron all day. But we are here. We are here at Carnrath Golf Club. We're two off in just over an hour's time. So we're going to get in, get settled up, and well, hopefully this bad boy is going to help us break 100. Better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the amount it costs, it better. Mm -hmm. But I the pin prize at the fourth and also the pen. Spray shot. All checked in, so I've had three and a half, but three hours sleep before midnight. And then we had and maybe half an hour of broken sleep and 20 minutes of broken sleep in the car. And I had about an hour and a half curled up on Lloyd's lap on a weird chair in the ferry. So I'm not overly optimistic, I'm not full of energy. But let's go along the course and we've heard good things about it. So we'll give our best go. Um, so it's going okay, but we've had a few bad holes there, and I actually have come up with this plan. I don't know how happy Lloyd's going to be about it. So I think that we should put the camera away for the back nine and actually see how we play, because it's actually so hard to do both. I know that it's totally our bag and that's why we're here and what we're doing, but I actually just think for one day, I think we actually should just focus on the game and not the filming and actually, for pure curiosity, see do we score better. Well, I realised today that trying to golf and film on two hours sleep after a full week of filming in Ireland certainly ain't good for your golf. I mean, that first nine holes was just was just a joke. I mean, we started off double well. bogey, par, mm -hmm. and then we were like triple, triple, triple. Yeah. It was just just incredible, and we had we had a fifty-two on the front nine. I mean, it was just just an absolute joke and frustrating when we kind of want to play good golf. Yeah. And we want to show you, obviously, the film process and we want you guys to enjoy us playing actual golf. But honestly, enough was enough. I mean, a 52 on the front nine. I mean, there was no way it was going to happen for us. No way unless we switched the camera off. So you took a bit of convincing but I convinced him to switch the camera off for the back nine and just to play. And I'll be honest, it started off fairly well. Mm -hmm. We we parred mm -hmm. the tenth. We bogey, we bogeyed. We had another par. Mm -hmm. But guys, we ended up on a snowman. 
But we only broke bloody 98, didn't we? 98! Come on! We broke 100! Oh, finally we, we broke, broke 100. 100 and it makes open! Now if Lloyd broke 100 on a normal day, he'd absolutely be mortified and give up golf. Even I will break 100 by myself. But for some reason, together, in a mixed open, we cannot Come break on. 100. Until did he? I'm just saying, it could have been 97 we, 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 had, we had a 98. A snowman on the last yep. guys. A snowman on the last. I mean, admittedly, I didn't line up that last part, but just there's a few things we did wrong. Oh, there. bang! I was so and good, we were, so we were, good. Yes. We, we had we had one double or triple in there, but the rest were like pars and bogeys. Yeah. We were just on fire, I and mean, I was putting some long ones in. Yeah. You were chipping close. It was just, it was just like the best back yeah. nine round of golf. Yeah. And it's like. It is kind of making me wonder whether I should just switch the camera off and film these things, but <laughs> we know how much that you guys love these, so leave those comments below. Do you love these videos or do you not? But come on, we did it after eight weeks. And on the 17th, Lloyd said, he was counting up the scorecard and he's like, right, we've got 90 here. We only need to hit nine to break 100 to get 99. And I said, if we shoot a nine on this last hole, I'm going to give up golf forever because that would be absolutely appalling golf after the goofy holes we played and now I scored an eight. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not, I mean he and that snowman parted to me on it. Oh he was close like he was close. But, but we did it Fox. We did it. We actually after eight weeks of painstakingly trying to learn each other's yeah. games and playing some tough courses here we did it Fee. Yeah we've got a little bounce in our step we're going to the next one now. 98. We had a 98 out there. Guys as always None of these videos would be possible without your support. So please, for us, as we scored a 98 today, leave those comments below, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe. Guess what? We came here to golf, and we ended up breaking 100! Do you know what the winning score was, though? What? Don't even tell me that. Don't, <laughs> don't even think about ruining... Ruin, what was the No, but... We were net 81. We were net 8. He won, yeah. Yeah. So there was like a 73 out there? It was like a net 61. There was a net 61? Yeah. So some group in this competition shot nine under their handicap? Yeah. Nine under their handicap? Yeah. Let's not dwell on that. Because we finally broke a hundred! Nine under their handicap? <laughs> That's it, we need more practice. <laughs> Guys, it's been a blast. So about six weeks ago, Lloyd and I went to buy some kitchen flooring and some bathroom flooring. And not only did we come out with that, we also came out with this. As soon as he clocked it, I knew we were in trouble. He's like, oh, this would be amazing. And the guy was like, yeah, it's the most amazing grass for chipping and putting on. It's proper golf grass, fake astroturfy, whatever it is, golf mat stuff. And it's an amazing offer down from whatever to 150 quid and Lloyd's like, I will take it. I will take it. And I was like, where's it gonna go? So his plan is, he's gonna lay it out here in this patio area, put a chipping net up behind and we can practice chipping from home. Now this bad boy has sat here, it was delivered maybe a week later, it's sat here for five weeks now. And I just suspect that by this time next week, it's still going to be lying there. Do you reckon he's actually going to lay it? He's just found out that he needs to put sand under it and properly bed it down. And he's like, oh, and I can see the already the look of like, yeah, I probably won't be bothered in his face. So what do you reckon? This time next week, is this bad boy going to be down? Or are we going to be practicing swinging on it? I'm going to say no.